Naval Ravikant is the CEO and co-founder of AngelList. With the net worth of over $65 million, he is an active angel investor and has invested in more than 100 companies, including mega-success unicorns like Twitter, Uber. He might be the most interesting man in the tech world today. When asked how Naval handles conflict, he said, The first rule of handling conflict is don't hang around people who are constantly engaging in conflict. All of the value in life, including in relationships, comes from compound interest. People who regularly fight with others will eventually fight with you. He said, he's not interested in anything that's unsustainable or even hard to sustain, including difficult relationships. In any situation in life, you only have three options. You always have three options. You can change it, you can accept it, or you can leave it. What is not a good option is to sit around wishing you would change it, but not changing it, wishing you would leave it, but not leaving it, and not accepting it. It's that struggle, that aversion, that is responsible for most of our misery. The phrase that I probably use the most to myself in my head is just one word, accept. Naval Ravikant said, there's a theory that he called the five chimps theory. In zoology, you can predict the mood and behavior patterns of any chimp by which five chimps they hang out with the most. So choose your five chimps carefully. When asked to define success and happiness, Naval said, if you want to be successful, surround yourself with people who are more successful than you are. But if you want to be happy, surround yourself with people who are less successful than you are. Born in India in 1974, Naval had moved to New York along with his family at the age of nine. Naval was raised by his mother for the majority of his childhood. Naval Ravikant learned about financial struggles early on. His mother juggled multiple jobs to support her two sons and attended night school in an immigrant's trying to survive situation. While a young boy, Naval explained that he didn't have many friends and wasn't very confident. His only real friends were books. While it made for a difficult childhood, Naval realizes the importance of being different. Naval said, everyone that ends up becoming an extreme winner in society starts off as a loser. If you're a popular kid, good looking and have money, then you're just going to party and date a lot. Why would you stay inside and do push-ups or read books, make incredible art? To create anything great takes some suffering and a bad hand early in life can turn out to be a good hand later on. Raised in the back streets of Queens, a dangerous part of New York City, with a mother busy working, Naval had an unusual after-school routine. Naval passed time by reading everything he could get his hands on. His reading journey began with comic books and science fiction, later graduating to history and news, with his intellectual curiosity leading him into psychology, popular science, technology. While in high school, Naval delivered Indian food for an illegal catering company to pay for college. One day, he had to serve at a birthday party of a classmate, which was incredibly embarrassing to be seen working while his peers celebrated. Naval wanted to hide away and die right there. Naval mentions this situation as kicking off his obsession with wealth as he was envious that the other kids could enjoy the party while he had to work. Naval said, he learned the importance of honesty from different places. When he grew up, he wanted to be a physicist and he idolized Richard Feynman. He read everything written by him, technical and non-technical, that he could get his hands on. Naval said, you must never, ever fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. So the physics grounding is very important because in physics, you have to speak truth. You don't compromise, you don't negotiate with people, you don't try and make them feel better. If your equation is wrong, it just won't work. Truth is not determined by consensus or popularity, usually it's quite the opposite. Naval said he find that 90% of thoughts that he has are fear-based. The other 10% are probably desire-based, and enlightenment is the space between your thoughts which means that enlightenment isn't this thing you achieve after 30 years sitting in a corner on a mountaintop. It's something you can achieve moment to moment and you can be a certain percentage enlightened every single day. When asked about immortality, Naval said, if you study even the smallest bit of science, 
you will realize that for all practical purposes, we are nothing. We're basically monkeys on a small rock orbiting a small backward star in a huge galaxy. This universe has been around for probably 10 billion years or more and will be around for tens of billion years afterwards. So your existence, my existence, is just closer to zero. It is like a firefly blinking once in the night. Nothing that we do lasts. Eventually you will fade. Your works will fade. Your children will fade. Your thoughts will fade. This planet will fade. The sun will fade. It will all be gone. If you don't believe in an afterlife, then you should realize that this is such a short and precious life. It is really important that you don't spend it being unhappy. There is no excuse for spending most of your life in misery. You've only got 70 years out of the 50 billion or however long the universe is going to be around. Everything Naval Ravikant does and advises has an element of simplicity to it. Of course, this is easier said than done. His teachings have the power to unlock your true potential and lead you toward a life of purpose, happiness and success. Now go forth and unleash your greatness.